Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Um, so I'd like to welcome you. Cantor, Kareth, and I welcome you to this Shabbat services. And before we begin, I'd like to remind you to please make sure your cell phones are turned off or turned to mute. And turn to someone around you and wish them Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. So there are some weeks when we really need Shabbos. We really need time to stop thinking about the politics and the stress and the world situation and just relax and rest and connect to the best part of ourselves and of our families. You know, um, in the Torah, when it talks about God resting, it says, Vayishbot, Vayom Hashishi, Vayinafash. And he rested on the sixth, on the Yom Hashvi'i, Vayinafash, on the seventh day. And this word, Vayinafash, comes from the word nefesh. It's the verb of soul. So it's like God rested and connected to God's soul or became a soul. So, Tonight, we're going to connect to our Shabbat soul. And according to the Kabbalah, on Shabbat, you gain an extra soul, a second soul, just to enjoy and rest and feel joy and beauty. So we're going to work on that this evening. And we're going to start by turning to page 10 to sing Hine Matov, how lovely it is for us all to be together tonight. Hine matovu manaim, shavet achim gam yachad. Hine matovu manaim, shavet achim gam yachad. Hine matov, shavet achim gam yachad. Yachad hine matovu manaim, shavet achim gam yachad. Hine matovu manaim, shavet achim gam yachad. Hine matov, hine matov. La 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 la. Hine matov, hine matov. La 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 la. Hine matovu manaim, shavet achim gam yachad. Hine matovu manaim, shavet achim gam yachad. So Rabbi Abraham and Joshua Heschel said that Shabbat is a palace in time. A palace in time. And we're going to enter this palace together. So the first thing you have to do when you go into an, a place is turn on the lights. We need to turn on the lights. So we're going to start with lighting the Shabbat candles as I invite the Michael family to come up. Hannah is having her bat mitzvah this weekend. And we turn to page three, page two, and we're going to turn on the lights in our palace with these beautiful golden Shabbat lights. And as those flames are kindled, we can take our hands and just reach out for them, circling three times, bringing that light in, letting that light infuse our souls and have our souls be refreshed as Rabbi Nanus taught us. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam Asher kidashanu b'mitzvotav V'tzivanu Lehad liknev Lehad liknev Shel 
Shabbat. As we wish Hannah and her family a very, very hearty Mazel Tov and uh, recognize the special light that's being brought into their lives as they recognize this milestone. Let's turn to page 24 for Shalom Aleichem. And uh, in, in these words of Shalom Aleichem, we imagine the angels uh, of Shabbat standing outside of the windows, witnessing what's happening inside, and waiting to see as the Talmud tells us, if something beautiful is happening inside. Uh, and we hope that the angels are witnessing all of you greeting each other as you've said Shabbat Shalom to one another and welcomed one another into, these, into this space. And they are the first welcomers in our palace, are the Shabbat angels as we enter the palace. They welcome us and we welcome them. Shalom Aleichem. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Hasharit, Malachi Yon, Mi Melech, Malachi Hamalachim, Hakadosh Baruchu. So we turned on the beautiful golden lights in the palace. We were greeted by the angels of peace. They greeted us, we greeted them. But what do you need in any palace? You need a queen, you need royalty. And so we're going to now welcome the Shabbat queen. We're going to meet the Shabbat queen. In the um, days of the Kabbalah, when they first started in the 16th century in Safat, um, the Jews used to dress in white and go out into the fields and sing and welcome the Shabbat queen, the Shabbat bride, some, she's a bride and a queen, into their midst, and we're going to do that now on page 20. Shamor vizachor bidi burechad, Hishmiano el hamiuchad adonai echad, Ushemo echad, Lishemo tiferet velitila. Lechad dodi, Ligarat kala, Tene shabbat neka. Likrat Shabbat lechu venelecha, ki him mekora haberacha, meroshmiketem nesucha, 
צוף מעשה במחשבה תחילה לך דודי לקראת כלה ונשבת נקבלה לך דודי לקראת כלה ונשבת התעוררי, כי בעורך קומי אורי, אורי אורי שירדברי, כבוד אדוני עלייך נגלה. לך דודי, לקראת קלה, ונשבת נקבלה. לקראת כלה ונשבת נקבלה. We rise and turn to the back to welcome in the Shabbat Queen. בואי ושלום עטרת בעלה. קם בשמחה ובשולה. תוך אמוני We can remain standing because we're going to do the Baruch in one minute. We feel the presence of the Holy One. We're not allowed to see the Holy One. But Rabbi Akiva, who was a great mystic and Talmudic scholar, actually talks about having this mystical experience where he didn't see the Holy One, but he saw the throne. He saw the throne. That was as close as he got. And the Baruch is about us welcoming the Holy One into our souls and our presence. This is the call to prayer and the, actually we bow to the Holy One as we encounter him on this Shabbat. So please turn to page 28 and we remain standing for the Baruch Hu. Baruch Hu. together in English on page 30 at the bottom of the page together. Blessed are you, Adonai our God, ruler of the universe, who speaks the evening into being, skillfully opens the gates, thoughtfully alters the time and changes the seasons, and arranges the stars in their heavenly courses according to plan. You are creator of day and night, rolling light away from darkness and darkness from light transforming day into night and distinguishing one from the other. Adonai Tzvaot is your name. Ever-living God, may you reign continually over us into eternity. Blessed are you, Adonai, who brings on the evening. And in this palace, in the presence of the Holy One, we feel this incredible love, we feel this incredible warmth, acceptance, and generosity. 
And then we look at our next prayer, Ahavad Olam. It's about everlasting love from God, giving, uh, giving to us through Torah, mitzvot, good deeds, kindness, all the most beautiful attributes are God's gifts to us. Ahavat Olam, page 32. Ahavat Olam, Beit Yisrael, Am Chavta, Torah Mitzvot, Chukim Mishpatim, Otan Nulim, Please be seated. I'd like to invite Hannah to please join us to lead us in the Ve'ahavta at this time. So we've lit the candles and turned on the lights. We've been welcomed by the angels of peace. We've encountered the queen who brought us beauty and the holy one who gave us love and acceptance and knowledge. And we just chanted the most beautiful and most symbolic prayer of all, the unity, the prayer of the Shema, where we all connect and say we are one. And so now, we must teach it to our children. We must pass it down from generation to generation. So please join Hannah in the Via Hafta. Tafot, 
ta cham amizizor betecha uvishareha nadiskeru ayasitem etom tai em kedoshim elohem adonai elohem asher hotei tetem eretz mi Yod lahem elohim, ani Adonai Elohim. Please join her as we read in English on pa the bottom of page 36. Love Adonai, your God, with, with all your heart, with, with all your soul, and with all your might. Take to heart these instructions for which I charge you today. Impress them upon your children. Recite them when you stay at home and when you are away. And when you lie down and when you get up, find them as a sign on your hand. Let them serve as a symbol on your forehead. Inscribe them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Thus you shall remain to observe all my commandments and be holy to your God. I am Adonai, your God, who brought you out of the land of so as I said, the palace in time is basically um, a domicile, a place for your second neshama, your second nefesh, your Shabbat soul, that you should use it for something that fulfills you and brings light and joy to you. So I'm going to ask you, what are you going to use your Shabbat soul for this Shabbat? I mean, we change it every Shabbat. So what are you going to use your Shabbat soul for? I'm going to use my Shabbat soul to finish reading my Daniel Silva, Daniel Silva mystery that I'm reading. I only have a Friday Shabbat afternoon where I can relax and read. I'm a fanatic reading this book, these books. So I'm going to just rest and read something I love. So what is somebody else going to do with your Shabbat soul this, this Shabbat? Yes. Hi. I have a few very important letters that I have to write, emails and notes to people that I love, and I will use my Shabbat spirit to write those five or six notes letters. Thank you. Okay. What is somebody else going to do? Yes. I will use tomorrow to look at my pictures from my recent trip to Israel and will enjoy the trip once more tomorrow. Welcome back. She just came back from an amazing trip. Yes, I want to see those pictures. Um, I'm just going to use it to spend some quality time with my mom. Quality time with his mom. That's beautiful. Okay, who else? A few more people. What are you going to do? Well, I know the Michael family is going to be having this amazing bat mitzvah. Hannah's going to be pouring her soul out reading the Torah tomorrow. Correct. You're going to be kvelling. <laughs> who else? Somebody else. One or two more people. What are you going to do with your extra Shabbat soul? What are you going to do? Is it going to be another day? Are you going to do laundry and just, you know, pretend it's not Shabbat? Or are you going to really take Shabbos into your heart? I'm going to help a dear friend who runs the dance studio that my children grew up in. Tomorrow is their recital. And so what I do is I go backstage, get all the little kids and line them up and make sure that they're ready to go on stage and, and take them back to their dressing room afterwards to turn them over to their parents. And enjoy their beautiful recital, too. Oh, my God, that's beautiful. One more or two more? Anybody? What are you going to do on your Shabbat? Yes. I'm going to renew my soul after a tough work week, and I'm going to have a two-hour Shabbat massage. Okay. Now we're talking. She's going to have a two-hour Shabbat massage. Okay. Cantor, what are you going to do? 
I'm going to call him out. My dad is here, and I don't get to see him very often. Welcome. Uh, so I am going to restore my Shabbat soul by spending time with him and my stepmom who are in town, which is very, very special. Um, and they're here for my daughter's graduation, which happened yesterday. Sorry, I'm bragging, but yeah, I'm bragging. So mom brag moment. Uh, congratulations, Francis. And in addition to getting to spend time with my amazing family, I'm also going to be on the Bema in the afternoon at Wilshire Boulevard, Boulevard Temple um, on the Glazier campus helping another family celebrate uh, Bat Mitzvah. So really special Shabbat. Okay. Last chance. Anyone else want to share what you're going to do? Yes. Okay. Inspired. You got inspired. Um, I'm going to spend the evening and tomorrow with my daughter. We'll go get Manny Petties. She leaves for camp for six weeks this summer. It'll be the longest that we've been apart. Oh, so enjoy. So that is part of being in the palace, is realizing that, that is, Shabbat is for you. It's for us. Shabbat, I find taking Shabbat, and it, uh, this is Shabbat. I'm only doing what pleases my soul. And when you do that, it really replenishes you, as they said, Vayina Fash, you replenish your soul for the coming week. Now, I don't think it was Shabbat, but there was a lot of replenishing of the souls of the ancient Israelites after they crossed the Red Sea. I know it's supposed to be called the Sea of Reeds, but just doesn't have that image like the Red Sea to me. I like to say the Red Sea. And they sang the first time the Jewish people ever sang to God in this beautiful voice. And the women danced, and Miriam led the women with her huge tambourines, her timbrels. On page 40, we sing Micha Mocha. Before we sing, yes. I'm going to invite another daughter of this congregation to come join me. Jeanette Mills is going to sing uh, duet Micha Mocha with me this evening. Um, and this is another way that I get to restore my soul by having this lovely soul join me. Page 44. And I love this saying, and we say it all the time, but it's so true. The Jewish people don't keep Shabbat. Shabbat keeps the Jewish people. And, and the words that you've been focusing on are right here. Shabbat Vayina Fash. That's right. Shabbat Vayina Fash. It says, and God ceased from work and was refreshed. But it's really like connected to his soul from the word nefesh. So Vishamru on page 44. Visham Hiru in Israel at Hashabat La so at Hashabat, let Dorotam Berito Lam. 
Misham Hiru Bene Israel at Hashabat La so that Hashabat let Dorotam very tall. like to invite Hannah up again for the Amida and please turn to page 46 and rise. We 
we continue silently with our own personal meditation or with the beautiful prayers in the Siddur. When the ark is closed, you may be seated. Shalom, Abim Ramav. Shalom, Aleinu. Ve'al kol Yisrael. Ve'imru. Ve'imru. Amen. Yase Shalom. Shalom, Shalom Aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael. Yase Shalom, Yase Shalom, Shalom Aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael. Yase Shalom, Yase Shalom, Shalom Aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael. Yase Shalom, Yase Shalom. Shalom Aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael Yase Shalom, Yase Shalom Shalom Aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael We take a moment now to remember those in our lives that need healing, blessings of healing, as we prepare to say the Misha Berach prayer. If someone needs a blessing for physical healing, emotional healing, spiritual healing, and you would like to say their names out loud so that we can bless them, please stand now. And when I come to you with the microphone, please share their name. Rick Mills. Josh Mills, Lori Harrison, Amelie Furness, Sava Tateriatnikov, and Scott Jacobson, Sophia Walpert, Betsy Skandor Pierre Martin. Karen and Sarah, Faith, um, and uh, Judy Pulver, Paulette Hawkins. Robin Kaplan, David Soltis. Karen Novoseller. Sheila Richmond. Uh, 
Yoshua ben Shindel, David Aaron ben Vardit, um, Yisrael ben Olis. I have some names of people who are watching at home that I would like to include. And some people who are here. Nicole Alkov, Isaac Ashur Zazet, Simon Aziz, Emily Blau, Chaim David, Eliza Bat Esther, Rick Frankel, Jacob Friedman, Vicky Friedman, Merlo Gadushi, Levi Jonathan, James Klein, Jack Liebhaber, Michael Levy, Ronald Lanicky, Philip Marber, Sheila Merowitz, Gila Meshkanian, Josh Mills, Annette Pansky, Helen Passman, Trevor Sangster, Charles Schwartz, Karen Shanbrom, Alan Sirodi, Meryl Werber, Stacy Wernick, Lily Nanis. Are we doing page 253? Yes. Yes. Mi Avraham Yitzhak So this Misha Berach dovetails perfectly into what I want to talk about for a few minutes. Because if you heard part of the blessing was El Na Rafanala, God please heal her. Her. And who is her? That is the story of this week's Torah portion, a part of this week's Torah portion. And another thing that our Talmud says is that day that you don't study Torah is a day that you've wasted. You need to study Torah every day, and so I'm not asking you to study Torah every day, but I thought we would look at the Torah portion, this section, for a few minutes because it's really interesting and juicy, and that's what makes Torah study so interesting, and it's, you're going to tell me what you think. So I'm going to pass out, it's just a, a page of some of the text. Let's just read it first um, and see the situation. It's a very dramatic situation. Would somebody like to read this? Who would like to read? Come on. In your nice South African accent. It will sound even classier than it is. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So, 
Miriam and Aaron began to talk against Moses because of his Cushite wife, for he had married a Cushite. Has the Lord spoken only through Moses, they asked? Hasn't he also spoken through us? And the Lord heard this. Now Moses was a very humble man, more humble than anyone else on the face of the earth. At once the Lord said to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, Come out to the tent of meeting, all three of you. So the three of them went out. Then the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud. He stood at the entrance to the tent and summoned Aaron and Miriam. When the two of them stepped forward, he said, Listen to my words. When there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, reveal, my, reveal myself to them in visions. I speak to them in dreams. But this is not true of my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. With him I speak face to face, clearly and not in riddles. He sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? The anger of the Lord burned against them, and he left them. When the cloud lifted from above the tent, Miriam's skin was leprous. It became as white as snow. Aaron turned toward her and saw that she had a defiling skin disease. And he said to Moses, Please, my Lord, I ask you not to hold against us the sin we have so foolishly committed. Do not let her be like a stillborn infant coming from its mother's womb with its flesh half eaten away. So Moses cried out to the Lord, Please, God, heal her, Elna. The Lord replied to Moses, If her father had spit in her face, would she not have been in disgrace for seven days? Confine her outside the camp for seven days. After that, she can be brought back. So Miriam was confined outside the camp for seven days, and the people did not move on till she was brought back. After that, the people left Chazerot, I think it's Chazerot, and encamped in the desert of Paran. So just to clarify something, Cushite, uh, Cush, uh, some people say it was Ethiopia, Sudan, so she had dark skin. So what was their sin? What did they do that was so terrible? What do you think was the sin? Yes. Go ahead. They talked about her in terms of her skin color. So you're saying that they said, oh, he married a black woman, and so that was the, the gossip or the slander or the putting of her down. And some, there are some minority commentaries who believe that, and they say, actually, the reason we know that is because her skin, the leprosy that she got, turned her skin white. So it was like God said, you don't like dark skin? I'll make you really white. So white that your skin's going to fall off. So that is one, one idea. Another more complex idea is that kush also means beautiful. She's beautiful. And so what they said is, she's so beautiful. He married this beautiful woman. And yes, he just pointed to his wife. And... <laughs> And, and aren't we as good as he is? So what does that mean? If they're saying she's beautiful, what's the problem? What's the gossip? What's the sin? Does, jealousy. Okay. Vanity. That they wish that she was beautiful. Oh, he has a prettier wife than we have. That's interesting. That's another possibility. Now, the rabbis say... And this is what's so interesting about Jewish learning, because the rabbis come up with all these fabulous ideas. Moses, after he came down from Mount Sinai, never had sex with his wife again. He actually wore a veil most of the time. He abstained from having relations, and his wife was very sad and depressed. And what they were saying is, how could he abstain from her? She's so beautiful. Do we Aren't we as good as he? And we are connected to our spouses. Why is he hurting his wife so badly? This is what the rabbis say is what they were saying. They were feeling sorry for her that Miriam, based on her history of always promoting families and connections and husband and wife, and they talk about how she brought her parents back together in a midrash when they got divorced, that that's what she was saying. So God says to them, how dare you talk about Moses? He's not like you. 
He's not like you. He has his own, he's on his own level. He and I converse in a way that no one else converses. Ironically, somebody points out, he's actually talking to Miriam, Miriam and Aaron just like he says he only talks to Moses about, you know, I, I only talk to Moses, but he's talking to them. Anyway, why was only Miriam punished? Yeah, why was only Miriam punished? What about Aaron? What happened to Aaron? What? Well, I, I know, but I'm curious if anybody has any ideas why. Why only her? Okay, so I'll give you a hint about Aaron's character. What do we know about Aaron's character from past behavior? And I'll give you another hint at, around the golden calf. What happened with the golden calf? Do we know? Come on, Rabbi and Rebbitson, you know. Well, or he was a weak character who was sort of pressured by the mob to make the golden calf. And so the rabbis say, Miriam probably influenced him because she's the strong personality and he went along with it. She started, and they say her name first, Miriam and Aaron. So they suggest that Miriam is the more powerful one. She's the one that sort of instigated the conversation. But what did she do wrong? What did she do wrong? Anybody have any ideas? She what? She doubted God. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, yes, Panina. She made a decision that without any proof that Moses doesn't love his wife anymore, and how could he? She mixed in where it didn't, wasn't her business. And actually, one of the commentaries says what she did wrong is she talked about him and not to him. She, and what we learn from this is if you have an issue with somebody, you don't go around to everybody else and say, why aren't they doing that? Look to what they're doing. You go to the person. This is his sister. She could say, you're neglecting your wife. I'm concerned. But she didn't. She talked behind his back. And as a leader, she's held to a very high standard, a higher standard than normal people. So, and we also see that leaders have marital problems because, you know, Moses did not really spend any time with his wife. And then Moses begged her, God, to, to heal her. And this is the prayer we say for the Misha Barach every single week, El Na Rafan Allah. And, Mo, and they say, why did he make such a short prayer? Why so short? Just a few words, not a really long, he makes, he can talk and make very long prayers because he was worried that because it's his sister and it's family, he shouldn't beg too much because it looked like he was uh, using his influence. So he made a very short prayer, which is lucky for us because that's the prayer we use. And she was healed. But let's just look at one more thing because all of this is in this little story about how do you confront someone that you have a problem with? You don't talk behind their back. And the Talmud is very clear that Lashon hara, gossip, is like murder. It's the, one of the worst things you can do. You destroy, it's, you destroy a person's soul. You destroy their reputation. You destroy their heart. And we know bullying and gossip, how destructive that can be. But what does it say about Miriam? Because what does it say the people did while she was kicked out of the camp for seven days? They stayed in one place. They did not move because we can't leave without our Miriam. We need our Miriam. She is the mother to the whole community. And even when she makes a mistake, we love her. And we can't leave without her. And that's why it was a big disaster when she finally died. For Moses and Aaron, after she died is when Moses hit that rock and was told he would never enter into the land of Israel. So she was really a very steadying force, and that's why what she did had such influence. So we all have this power with our words. 
And as the rabbis remind us, the world was created with words, and God spoke, and the world was created. We can create worlds and destroy worlds. And that's what we learn from our Torah portion this week. Shabbat Shalom. And to reiterate the power of words, the cantor is going to sing uh, Yehi Ratzon, may the words of my mouth be acceptable to you. And may the words of our mouths always be acceptable to each other. And Jeanette's going to join me once again for this beautiful duet of those words, Yehi Ratzon. We don't need angels. We have them right here. So beautiful. Thank you. So just a few announcements before we conclude with um, our Kaddish and Kiddush and Motzi and then a little Onig afterwards. This uh, Sunday, The Braid, which is the Jewish storytelling theater company, will be here at 4 p.m. for their final show of the season. If you haven't come, they're fantastic. They do amazing stories and shows. Uh, it's this Sunday at 4 o'clock. Um, also, the Sisterhood of Wilshire Boulevard Temple is having a high tea on Tuesday, if anybody's interested in coming at 12 o'clock at the Old King's Head in Santa Monica. So there's still time to sign up for that. And um, you may have seen this. I wrote it in my Shabbat message. I'm starting a new program called Connections. And this is for anyone in this temple who feels like you don't know enough people and you want to know more people and you want to come to temple and know who know people and you want to maybe do things with people and you want to meet more people or new people and we're starting with a brunch on shabbat morning june 25th um here 
So I invite you to this brunch. It's at 11 a.m., a reasonable time for an hour and a half, two hours. It's not just for single people. It's for couples. It's for any age. And then we'll see the demographics and we'll divide according to the demographics. But it's just a place at the temple to start to know more people. And I hope if you're feeling that way, that you'll come. We'd love to have you. So um, I want to thank our musicians for their beautiful music. And our Jeanette, thank you so much. It was beautiful. And now we're going to take a moment to remember those who are no longer with us. If you are observing a Yortzeit or the first 30 days, we invite you to stand now so we can know who you are and share your sorrow and comfort you. We begin with those who passed away during Shloshim during the past 30 days. Carl Kovitz, Jerry Fleischman, Louis Goldman, Sid Mandel, Paul Nesbitt, Naum Tichman. We also remember those whose yort sites took place this past week, the anniversaries of their deaths. Sandra Aisley, Marion Paula Albert, Lillian Baker, Harold Benjamin, Max Block, Susan Blum, Fanny Bronstein, Theodore Brenner, Kenneth Brookman, Cheryl Cheda, David Chernoff, Sidney Chersky, Bernard Cooper, Sadie Crystal, Nisha Dane, Charles Dom. Bessie Enton, Samuel Epstein, Aileen Fine, Harry Feldman, Sarah Fields, Jules Firetag, Barry Fisher, Jerry Fishman, Marlene Friedman, Alice Friedman, Dorothy Gerstein, Lena Gilbert, Kimberly Glover, Jay Goldberg, Lori Gompers, Mort Green, Shayla Green, Joanne Greenwald, Ann Grossman, Eleanor Heilbrum, Rose Katzenhorn, Dr. Louis Itzkowitz, Erwin Jameson, Mary Janol, Edith Jaretsch, Jar Jar Eddie Katz, Barbara Kaiser, Helen Klein, Alan Koppelman, Leonore Jacobson Kunz, Eura Landa, Ida Lehman, Robert Leff, Ronald Leaf, David Lewis, Elaine Rosencrantz Lieberman, Devorah Livne, Ruth Lunin, Stephanie Lieberger, Cyril Isaac Magnin, Donald, Donald Earl Marin, Mitchell Moore, Melvin Morgan, Darcy Notkin, Seidel Perlman, Michael Phillips, Richard Popkin, Bessie Provisor, Blanche Isaacson Pullman, Kenneth Randall, Marguerite Rissman, Herbert Rose Sr., Sue Rosenberg, Donald Rossman, Iris Trabaj Rower, Rose Rutterman, Sam Sabah, Mabel Samter, Al Savad, Frank Schiller, Betty Schwartz, Lloyd Shapoff, Jeanette Sherman, Samuel Shamstein, Evelyn Sidney, Barbara Siegelman, Francis Silver, Cynthia Serlestein, Morton Slater, Issy Sloam, Cecilia Sonnenberg, Ruth Spielberg, Charles Stern, Irv Temkin, Jerry Wendy Turtle, Sarah Wagner, Jack Waldo, Alex Weisskopf, Arlene Weider, Sally Weiner, Suzanne Wolf, Hortense Wolf, Frank Zeitschik, Dorothy Zinberg, Jill Sue Zuboff. Are there any other names to add? We also remember those who gave their lives defending the United States of America and the State of Israel, and those who died in senseless violence, in war, from disease, and we also remember those who have no one to say Kaddish for them. We take them all as our own as we please rise and turn to page 294. Yit gadal vi yit gadash shemei rabba, vi alma divra chivute vi amlich malchute, v'chai echon uvi yom echon uvi Yisrael, Bagala bisman kari vimru amen. Yehe shme rabba mavarach le olam ome omaya. Yit barach vishta bach vit baar vit romam vit nase. Vit hadar vit ale vit alal shme de kudusha brihu. Le ela min kol birchata vishirata. Tushbachata venechamata. Dami ram vialma vimru amen. 
Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shamaya, Vachaim Aleinu Vial Ko Yisrael Vimru Amen. O Se Shalom Bim Romav, Hu Ya Ase Shalom, Aleinu Vial Ko Yisrael Vimru Amen. O se shalom bim roma, hu ya se shalom aleinu. O se shalom bim roma, hu ya se shalom aleinu. O se shalom him Roma, who ya se shalom aleinu. O se shalom him Roma, who ya se shalom aleinu. O se shalom him Roma, who ya se shalom aleinu. Ya se shalom. This is, uh, you're going to hold on really tight to either side. This is for the birthright. You want to get the biggest piece. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech olam, hamotzi lechem min haaretz. Okay, go. Rip, rip, rip. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh! Shabbat shalom!
really, really sweet of you. And we will miss seeing you in that space. You guys and all of Yeah. Not on campus. Right, right. I know. That's, yes. Well, and you can always see me. Use them the next time we're here. 